Hi, my name is Ryan Puffer. I'm a program manager on the Windows Server and Services team at Microsoft. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the new Windows Server security features coming in Server 2016 called Just Enough Administration. It's a role-based security feature in PowerShell that can help you reduce how many administrators you have in your environment, as well as what they can do when they have those privileges. Imagine you're an IT admin and your monitoring software notifies you that one of your DNS servers has a poisoned DNS cache. The affected server also happens to be a primary domain controller for your domain, Contoso.com. Now you know that there's a command in PowerShell to be able to fix this poisoned DNS cache, so you decide to use PowerShell Remoting and sign into the server with your administrator credentials. Once you're in there, you go ahead and search for that command to fix the poisoned DNS cache. There it is, clear DNS server cache. Go ahead and run that, and you're done. Now you can go ahead and close that support ticket, and everything's all back to normal. So that was a really easy demo of how someone can use PowerShell to fix a poison DNS cache, but there's a problem in how we did this, and that is that we connected to a domain controller using administrator credentials in order to be able to run this clear DNS server cache command. And that means that when I signed in, I was effectively operating as a domain admin. And as a domain admin, I can do whatever I want. If I were a malicious administrator or an attacker had obtained my credentials through a phishing attack, I could do anything such as installing arbitrary software, running other commands on this machine, such as commands to query the Active Directory database. I could even copy the entire database off to a USB stick and then take it to a different machine, run some free software from the internet on it, and try to crack passwords of other users who have access to resources I currently don't have. This is a problem, and it's one not helped by the binary nature of Windows administration. When you sign in Windows, you're usually either an administrator or you're not. Some tools like Active Directory included role-based access control solutions, or RBAC, which help you delegate access to specific users to perform some administrative commands in Active Directory. But the problem with such RBAC tools is that they're specific to the application for which they were written. I can't use the Active Directory RBAC to go constrain access to DNS or IIS or Hyper-V. I need different RBAC tools for each of those, and there are some things that you can't even RBAC in the first place. This is what Just Enough Administration is designed to solve. Just Enough Administration comes pre-installed in Windows Server 2016, and it provides a generic role-based access control solution that uses PowerShell remoting. GIA is unique because it's a platform. You can use GIA to add RBAC functionality to anything that can be managed through PowerShell. Let's take a look at what that means for our original DNS scenario. I'm going to use PowerShell again to connect to the server, but this time I'm going to connect to a GIA endpoint. The GIA endpoint was created by a highly trusted admin who configured it to give me access to all the commands I need to fix any DNS problems. That includes everything in the DNS module, as well as some other commands like restart service in case the DNS service has crashed. And more importantly, I'm connecting with non-administrator credentials. I can't use these credentials to use remote desktop onto this DC, for example. All right, so now we're in the GS session. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go take a look at the identity under which I'm running in this GS session. So I'm gonna run this custom command I wrote, get user info. That's going to print out some uh, information about the underlying PowerShell context. You'll see here that there is this connected user. That's who I signed in with. That's my day-to-day -day, uh, average account. This account is not permission to manage the domain controller. But my run as user, that is the account under which all the commands I run are executed, is this WinRM virtual account. And you'll see my name is attached to the name of it. This is a one-time virtual account that was spun up for the duration of this PowerShell session, and it is locally permissioned to be an administrator on this machine. That means I can run commands that require elevated permissions without actually signing in with those permissions, and that's very powerful. So again, let's try to repeat what we did earlier. Git command, DNS cache. Seems I still have all the right commands I need. I can run clear DNS server cache. And there we go. Pretty much the same exact experience we had before, but this time I didn't have to sign in with admin credentials. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I can also do things like restart service. But what's important is I can't restart other services that aren't relevant to my role as a DNS admin. For example, I can't go restart the WinRM service because that's not important to me as a DNS admin. That highly trusted administrator decided I didn't need that. Similarly, I can't go browse the file system. By default in GIA, the file system is not exposed to prevent information disclosure. There's simply no need for me to browse the file system as a DNS admin. So you can see here that as a DNS admin using GIA, I have just enough rights on the system to get my job done. I can run any PowerShell or command line tool that this highly trusted admin gave me access to. And in this example, we talked exclusively about DNS servers, but you could configure these roles for whatever you have on your system. You could use it to manage Hyper-V, Internet Information Services, third-party programs that are programmable through the command line. The choice is yours. GIA is there to help you create effective role-based access policies for the management tools on your machine. So let's recap what I did in this video. I started by showing how a DNS admin may need domain admin privileges if he has to perform actions not covered by existing RBAC tools and the risk that that action poses. We then took a quick look at just enough administration, which allowed me to use non-admin credentials to run specific commands related to my role on the DNS server. I wasn't able to do things that aren't related to my role as a DNS admin, but everything I had to do to clear this poison DNS cache, I could do.